All across Europe, so-called smart cities are emerging as testing grounds for new and exciting technologies. Think of a city full of sensors and robots, a city which runs on algorithms and apps. These technologies come with the promise of making the city cleaner, healthier, safer and greener. But is that truly a place where people want to live? Much depends on the way data and technology are used. A smart city can promote the values that most of us hold dear. These values include democracy, human dignity, privacy, connectedness, sustainability and equality. But a smart city can also undermine these values. If decision makers neglect what's at stake, or important ethical questions are left to engineers and managers, technological innovations may bring unpleasant surprises. This is why we wrote the Charter for the Smart City. To encourage public debate and democratic control. And to help local politicians steer value-based technological innovations in their own communities. Because there's lots to consider. Take the question of mobility. When we talk about shared transport, we tend to think of Uber, Lime and other big companies. However, there is another model. In some cities, residents unite in transport cooperatives. They share bikes, e-bikes or even electric cars amongst themselves. Green ones, of course. Smart software and apps make sharing easier and collective use of emissions-free vehicles brings us closer to a future of sustainable mobility. These cooperatives not only mean cleaner and fewer vehicles, they also foster connectedness in the city. A pool of vehicles governed by its users is a new urban commons. Self-governance strengthens democracy. A smart city which embraces sustainability, connectedness and democracy would thus do well to support smart citizens' cooperatives rather than platform capitalists. Technology can also help us keep an eye on vulnerable loved ones. Sometimes the homes of the very elderly who live alone are equipped with sensors. The data from the sensors is analysed by an algorithm. If something seems off, the software sends an alarm to a care worker. This use of technology looks efficient. A care worker doesn't need to check on the elderly person as often because the algorithm watches over her. Technology saves time and money. Or does it? An algorithm can monitor vulnerable people, but it cannot provide human contact. And sometimes that is exactly what is needed. So should we leave it to technology to watch over our elderly fellow citizens? In a smart city, the values of human dignity and connectedness could be at risk. Not to mention the privacy implications of a house filled with sensors. Speaking of which, what happens when a city introduces cameras with live facial recognition? Streets might become cleaner, street life more orderly. But at what price? Our right to privacy would be seriously undermined. This right doesn't end when we step out the front door. All-seeing algorithms do far more than just catching villains. They stifle creativity and diversity in society. Also, public trust might erode when people feel their every action is being monitored. And that's not good for democracy. So smart cameras might not be such a smart idea after all. These examples highlight that a smart city needs to debate and spell out which values it wants to promote through technology. It is also important to identify at an early stage which values may conflict. The Charter serves to guide this public debate, not just for politicians, but also so activists and engaged citizens can get involved in smart city policies. For a smart city is only smart if it taps the wisdom of its citizens. You can download the Charter for free in five languages. Please, share this video.